Hello and welcome to a new video about three-phase AC rotary current. Today we want to talk about how we generate this. I said the public power distribution zone, this is actually three-phase AC. Uh, I'm not sure if all over the world, but in a pretty big part of the world it's three-phase AC. So it must be a it must be pretty nice to generate, right? And now I want to show you how this is generated, yeah? how a power plant is generating electrical power. Well, actually, we have a stationary, we'll start with a stationary uh, magnetic field. So we'll draw this in here now. So we have somewhere a magnetic field. I'll point this down here. Doesn't really matter the direction. Yeah? I think that's enough. That's our magnetic field. We have an induction of B, uh, flux density of V. Uh, and I will draw in here now somewhere a region book. There's a region point. And here is uh, the X axis. Here is the Y axis. Yeah. Does not really matter. Not T, X. Does not really matter, I must say. Just I have here an origin point. All right. And I have. A, a coil, spool, a coil, yeah? and this coil is looking somewhere. Yeah, let's make it like that. Here's one end, here's the other end. That's a coil, like this. Okay, windings, the windings. I've cut through the coil, and this coil I call it U yeah? for whatever reason. <laughs> the coil U, yeah? and this coil is not just sitting there, this coil is rotating. Here we have a rotational speed, yeah? we have a rotational speed of omega. All right? So actually our coil has here a phi, yeah? a phi u, which will change over time. So I have a rotating coil in a stationary magnetic field. Let's calculate how much is the magnetic flux through this coil. Huh? So this is here phi, phi, and the phi is of course changing over time, huh? while we will see. And of course this is the magnetic flux density, that's clear. Huh? And then multiplied by the area. And the area is actually the projected area I have here. Okay, so this is the area of the coil, huh? how much this is. And now I have to multiply this with the cosinus of this phi u here, okay? So multiply it by cosinus of phi u from t. And since phi u is changing, I will also have a changing flux, right? So this is u, and now I will also multiply this with n, yeah? Because I now I have not only have the flux, I have the combined flux. Yeah, through all the windings there. This is my flux. Yeah? And my phi u equals omega multiplied by t. Yeah? Angular velocity multiplied by time is the, is the angle. And now let's have a look what is happening uh, for our voltage. Yeah? We have here ut and according law of induction this is minus the change rate, the negative change rate of the combined flux. Yeah. Let's have a look what is changing here. Yeah. N is not changing. B is not changing. I said it was stationary. A, the coil, is also not changing. N and A of the coil are constant. What is changing is in here. So we have a cosinus. And the change rate of the cosinus is negative sign. Yeah? Cosinus starts at 1 and is getting lower. Yeah? And the change rate of at 0 of the cosinus is 0. So this fits to the, to the sign. Yeah? Sign is 0. Yeah? And then the change rate increases, 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 increases. Yeah? Or oh, decreases actually. This is why it's actually minus sinus. Yeah? So we have here sinus omega t and since it's minus sinus and this minus is plus minus and minus is plus 
multiplied by mi minus, and multiplied by minus is plus, not and minus, minus multiplied by minus is plus. So I don't have to consider this minus here, this is nice. However, what I need to consider is the inner derivation of this. Yeah? So this is also multiplied by omega. This is the, the faster this is going here, yeah? the, the, more, the, the more severe is the change rate. Yeah? So here we have, we have omega. So actually, what is written here? This is u u, yeah? u at the coil u is a u peak multiplied by sinus omega d. What we will get yeah, is a sinus shaped voltage in this coil, in this rotating coil. Yeah? We have a sinus shaped voltage with a peak voltage and this equals omega n B A depends on how many windings this coil has, depends on the strength of the magnetic field, depends on the area of the coil, huh? and also depends on the speed of the coil. This determines the peak voltage, and the peak voltage is sign shaped and is producing this UU. This is how wall phase AC would be produced. Now I take a second coil huh? and I Say the second coil. It here. The second coil is 120 degree behind the first coil. Okay, physically third, 120 degree. So this means my phi, I call this V, my phi V from T is nothing than my phi U from T minus 120 degree. Okay. And if I'm thinking about in radians, yeah, then we have u from t minus, and now this is 2 pi third, this is radian, this is degree. Okay. So this means my combined flux through the coil V is exactly the same, n multiplied by V multiplied by A, and now we have this cosine of phi v. So this is actually uh, N B A N B A <laughs> N B A uh, cosinus omega t minus 2 P third. And now I make the same thing here. The inner derivation stays omega. This is a constant, the inner derivation of this would be zero, so I don't have to consider this. I only have this omega d. So where I'm ending up is that my voltage at V from T is the same U B and then, then sinus omega d minus 2 P third. So I'm ending up at the second voltage, which is, which is 120 degree later. Ah, this is already good. And to make a full three-phase AC, I will put in a third coil, mounted like that. Now it's getting really a nice, colorful picture. Again, 120 degree later. So my phi, I call it W, my phi W from T is phi U from T minus 240 degree. So this is phi U from T minus 4 pi third radian degree, okay? So my combined voltage, uh, my combined flux is again the same N, again, again the same B, N and A could vary, uh, but I say it's the same, same coil. Uh, multiply by cosinus of phi W from T. So this is NBA. MB cosinus omega 3 minus 4p third. So this means my voltage in my cold W is again the same peak voltage multiplied by sinus omega t minus 4p third. So a phase shift of 240 degree. Ta ta! Here we have our three phase AC. So our three phase AC is produced by three coils which are uh, physically mounted in 120 degree uh, offset, uh, rotary offset, 
And then we will produce three voltages in the three coils. The three coils are called U, V, W. Uh, and I'm happy. Uh, not entirely. This is everything is correct. Uh, but you know, if I would produce now energy with this stuff, then I produce a voltage, then this voltage is driving some current through some network. Uh, so I also have some really big current here in this in these coils. Uh, because all the power I'm producing, there is a current run. And I have a rotary part where I have to take current away from it. This is not working very well. So I need to have some sliding contact or something like this. This is working somehow for you know lower currents, but for higher currents, ah, this is not good. There is wear, there is dust, there is resistance, there is this is not good. This is not good. This is why real engines or real generators look a little bit different. Real electrical machines, they look like that. They have here, I will try to draw a circle. Here we have a circle. This should be a circle. I mentioned it because I never managed to draw a circle. It's always ending up like this. But I will simply take this here and say, okay, here I have a yoke, I think it's called in English. In German it's yoke, yeah. pole, all that in German. I have three of them. And this is also not very good. This should be 120 degree here. I apologize. And this shall be also 120 degree. Alright? Does not look that way, I know. Yeah. And then I put on my coil here. So here, I will say here is my winding, tack, 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 tack. Here are my connectors. Here I have my coil U. Here are my windings. Tack, 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 tack. Here is my connector. I have my coil V. Coil v. And here are my windings. Tack, 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 tack. Here is my connection. Here is my coil W. Right? And in the middle, I mount in the easiest way a rotating, a rotating permanent metal. <laughs> and now, what is changed really is that now the magnet field is rotating, and the coils are in standstill. It doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't really matter if I would imagine the coils here stand still and the magnetic field rotating. I have the same, and this is happening here also. However, this time here we are rotating now in this direction. Yeah, here is omega because we have to u v w u v w. So in this order we have to pass the the, the coils. All right. This is called permanent synchronous machine. Yeah, we will talk about machines later in later videos. Later, there is there will be there. Maybe from your point of view, there is already a series of video about different uh, different machine types, and this would be a synchronous machine with a permanent magnet, permanently excited. Yeah. This is maybe dangerous yeah, because you know in this peak voltage here we have this omega inside. Yeah. This means as long as the omega, the the rotary RPM of this is constant, yeah, no issue. Yeah, we have the constant, constant maximum voltage. If we are getting faster, due whatever reason, yeah, then the voltage is increased. Yeah, exactly the same amount as when getting faster. And there I really have to think about how is my generation. Usually a turbine, some turbine types are even capable of going up to almost double speed. Yeah, and then we would have double the voltage. Yeah, double the voltage. So either I have to think about, either I have to do this, and say okay, then it's double the voltage, so I have to make this isolation here better or more expensive or whatever, then that's the way it is. Yeah? Or I have to find somehow a way how to break this somehow, how to, to, to bring manners to the turbine or use a different propelling system. Yeah? Of this, of this machine, or 
I say, okay, then I don't use a permanent magnet like this. I will use an electric magnet. So I will produce here a magnetic field by current, by an excitation current. And then again, I have the trouble that I have to somehow get the excitation current inside there because then there is a coil and this coil is producing the, the field, the magnetic field. And, but this is usually not that big of an issue because the excitation current is compared to the working current out here pretty low. Yeah, so you, yeah, you need to have somehow sliding contacts and that stuff, but it's working. It's working. Yeah. This is, and then if you have here, if you can change the magnetic field here and this omega is going up, you can easily reduce the speed yeah, by reducing the excitation current. Yeah, then the speed is getting lower and the peak voltage is also blocked. This is a peak power plants, this is usually how it's done. Yeah. This is not a permanent magnet, this is an electric magnet. Then, but the I hope the machines will be from the metal. They do. <laughs> but for the principle, it's a principle sketch. Right? Duration of three phase AC. This is how this is done. Right? One magnetic field, three coils, physically shifted by 120 degrees, generating 120 degree phase shift voltages and currents subsequently yeah all right so we now have our three voltages and we said our three voltages we can use in different ways okay we can use them either from each phase on its own connected to a star point or we could use the line voltage between two phases we'll have a look at this yeah we will have a look at this starting in the next video we will talk about a star circuit yeah? we'll see what this is yeah a symmetrical let's start with a symmetrical load first and then in upcoming videos we go further next time star with symmetrical load for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye